this fine Italianate style building at Star Cross on the South Devon main line it was built by the South Devon Railway. It's a pumping house, so it was a pumping house. It's the only one that survives that actually was uh, used. Another one survives down near Torquay, which was never made use of. And likewise, another one survives at Totnes, that was never actually used. The line in those days was a single line. It was a uh, Brunel's seven foot nought and a quarter inch broad gauge. Now, the problems you had in those days, in the days of 1847-1848, when this uh, line worked as an atmospheric railway, was that the gradients on the edge of Dartmoor, Dainton Bank, were thought too severe for the locomotives, the steam locomotives of the time. Also, another problem was the extreme amount of smoke around Pleasant, particularly in tunnels, that uh, locomotives gave out. Brunel had been to Ireland and seen an atmospheric railway in operation and thought it might be a success here. He established a pumping station at three mile intervals, basically at each station, except for Exeter, St Thomas, where the, the train had to be held by brakes. And these pumping stations would pump out the air, creating a vacuum in a pipe laid down the middle, which had a valve running along the top. And that, all that was required was one of the carriages to have a piston that went into the pipe and then the train would be sucked along, although sometimes it needed assistance with a, a backup or secondary vacuum pipe. In the example in Ireland, it worked very well. The problem with the here was it was a much longer line. The line actually ran from Exeter as far as Tynmouth and then eventually onto Newton Abbott. Uh, but after a year it was abandoned. One of the main problems was that the salt air would cause the leather, which was the valve, to crack. It's also said that rats used to eat the leather. Um, that's not really recorded, but it's uh, known that rats got sucked, in, sucked into the vacuum within the pipe. Also the pipe size was wrong. Brunel had to replace the diameter of the pipe. Uh, and even then, these pumping stations had to work at a much higher rate than normal to create a vacuum. Also, at first, there wasn't a telegraph system between the individual pumping stations. So they were pumping, sometimes unnecessarily, when they, the train wasn't on its way. And that, of course, meant that vastly more fuel in terms of coal was being used. The leather was on the valve was coated with uh, grease in the hope of creating a better vacuum. Uh, in very cold weather, when it's icy, that also caused the, the vacuum to be incomplete. It caused the leather to crack. And eventually also sections of the valve began to rip off entirely. A solution was found using vulcanized rubber. Uh, but by that time, the directors of the South Devon Railway uh, had had enough. So at huge expense, the whole project was abandoned. Um, the pipes occasionally turn up as being used as drains and uh, of course later on Brunel's broad gauge was also abandoned. Uh, you sometimes see his unique rail style being used as, as a straining post on some of the, the fences beside the railway. The rail he used was um, a, basically a piece of metal that was pushed up in the centre also, he used very few transverse railway sleepers. Instead, he had a longitudinal sleeper running underneath each rail. These were also staked down. Very fine looking building. Rather a clashing Italianate design compared with the, the rest of the, the village. The tower had to be reduced in height because of the danger of falling on the railway. Notice the width of the arch there, allowing for a seven foot nought and a quarter inch gauge coal trucks to enter. Dawlish Station used to be on a single track line. So when the track was double because of the increased traffic, it meant that it'd be partly overlapping the beach here. 
which has resulted in it being damaged on many occasions. This was part of Brunel's atmospheric line, so the building ruins on the left-hand side with, a, with what looks like the old tower with the pumping engine, with the old windows and the portions of fireplaces. That's all that remains of the old pumping house. The old pumping station at Totnes was never actually used. <laughs>